The fact that Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby, two of the best to ever lace them up, have never played together for Team Canada is a damn shame. See, with an incredibly successful WBC now wrapped up, McDavid was asked about it and had this to say. I thought it was really cool. It's what we've been asking for in hockey for a long time, right? You know, it's best on best. And, you know, look, everyone's talking about baseball. And, you know, did you see, you know, Otani versus Trout? And, you know, that's what hockey's been missing for, you know, almost a decade now. So, um, yeah, that's what, we've been, that's what we've been asking for. So I don't know how many baseball fans we've got here, so I won't go into it too much. But for those that don't know, yesterday was the finale of the WBC, the World Baseball Classic, and it played out like a movie. The game came down to Otani, a dual threat pitcher slash absolute bomb hitter against his teammate, the greatest player of this generation, Mike Trout. With a full count and the game on the line, Otani strikes out Trout and Japan won it all. For baseball fans, this is going to go down as one of those all-time moments, and as a result, it has the world talking about baseball again, as it should. So, how do we get this for hockey? The closest thing to this recently that I remember in hockey was the 2010 Olympic gold medal game between Team USA and Team Canada. That was absolutely electric, but as McDavid says, it's something that the hockey world has been missing for eight years now. The NHL has not had their players participate in the Olympics since Sochi in 2014, as in 2018, after a run of five consecutive Winter Olympics featuring NHL players, the NHL made the decision to not allow its players to participate due to travel costs as well as the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, refusing to ensure players in the event of injury. So of course, not surprisingly, it all came down to money. The NHL didn't want to pay for players to travel just to potentially get injured and cost the money back in North America, so whether you want to blame the NHL or the IOC for not covering players, it was fans, the players themselves, and hockey as a whole who were the ultimate losers here. Then for the 2022 Beijing Olympics, it was looking increasingly good, and had McDavid even saying it be right up there with winning the Stanley Cup. And yet, just months after that, the NHL ruled not to participate again, this time citing COVID concerns. Now, it's not just the Olympics, it's also the International World Cup of Hockey that we haven't seen since 2016, with the planned 2024 event being cancelled, and so the next closest tournament would be the 2025 World Cup of Hockey. But if that falls through, the next stop would be the 2026 Olympics. But the problem is, when McDavid says that this is what hockey's been missing for eight years, it also means that players primes are coming and going. You ever see this beautiful piece of hockey history with Lemieux and Gretzky pairing up? The fact that this generation's greatest player, the greatest player on the planet right now, has never got to play with a guy on the tail end of his prime in Sidney Crosby is just, it really sucks. And not just for Canada. With all of the incredible talent the league has right now from around the world, it is such a shame that we haven't seen a best-on-best -best tournament for all these years. Now, I know we can't just put all the blame on the NHL here. The NHL, the IOC, and the IIHF are three of the most stubborn organizations there are. So it's not surprising that we are where we are, but please just figure something out. It is maddening. I don't care if it's the Olympics, the World Cup of Hockey, or what it is. I just want to see the best of the best play in a tournament representing their countries. The players want it, the fans obviously want it, and it undoubtedly grows the game. All of these people talking about the WBC right now certainly won't be hurting baseball. With that said, the Russia situation is one that throws a wrench into things regardless. Because while I would rather have a best-on-best -best tournament than nothing, it's pretty heavily impacted if you don't have a team Russia with players like Ovechkin, Malkin, Kuznetsov, Vasilevsky. I mean, that in and of itself is a dilemma for sure. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. I'd really like to know what you have to say on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.